page 88. I will read one or two of these items for you. Items that are high in potassium. It says potassium is necessary for the heart, for the kidneys and other organs to work normally. Now, some people are saying, you know, they take potassium supplements. But remember, in your foods book, there are potassium items that contain high amounts of potassium. We want to keep this affordable to people that they don't have to go to the supplements. Because what will happen sometimes, supplements and herbs will take the place of medicine and people won't make the changes for a lifetime. We don't talk to people about managing any of their diseases. We talk to them about reversing these diseases. So you want to? No, can you give it for me? I don't remember it specifically. The four groups of mice that they did a study on, as my wife was saying, and the mice were placed on different supplements. But I think this is important. There were four groups of mice. One was given a poor diet. This is actually found in our family medical guide. And it talks about there were four groups of mice. One was given a poor diet. One was given a poor diet with supplements. Another one was given a good diet. And then the fourth group was given a good diet with supplements. Do you know which group did the best? Good diet, no supplements. Those mice did the best. So supplements, and more and more research is showing, supplements can actually take away from our health if we're not taking them carefully. I usually tell people the best way to take supplements is when you do their vitamin panel and your doctor says you are deficient in an area, let's have you take this supplements for a moment until we get to a good level. And then start using the foods to increase your supplements, to increase those vitamin levels. I didn't want to take over. I thought you knew it. I, didn't, I wouldn't have come up if I didn't know you didn't know it. <laughs> No, that, w that was good because I think the people need to be informed on these things because supplements are becoming a booming industry, a booming industry. So I'm glad you shared that with them. Another thing, especially just to add to that, what my wife was saying, in terms of prostate cancer in men, what the studies have found is that those who do take more supplements, it increases their chances of prostate cancer by 45%. And that's prostate cancer in men. There's some other studies I have on some other issues as well, but that's the one that I can remember, I guess maybe because I'm a man and it, it sticks in my mind <laughs> maybe more so than some of the others, yeah. And I'd be happy to show it to you afterwards when I'm finished. Now, key foods that, oh, heart, kidneys, and or other organs. Mm-hmm, yes. Volume two, page 88. Mm -hmm. and it gives you a full list of items there for people. So that's why I'm not going to bother to go through this whole list of items unless there's some things in addition to that that I can share with you. Now, what I will share is that some of these items that are listed, like your nuts, they're moderately high in potassium. Of course, they, ha they list the banana, and you have your beans or legumes or peas. They're all kind of listed in the same category. Those also are very good for hypertension as well. Now, okay, um, and your fruit as well. So it's going to be a, almost a total change of diet for the person when you share this with them. Now, let me share something with you. Brother Luke mentioned this earlier this morning, the key ingredient called nitric oxide that the body naturally produces when certain foods are consumed. Those foods are your nuts, some of your seeds, and your beans, peas, or legumes. When a person eats either one of these items, the body converts that amino acid called L-arginine to nitric oxide. Nitric oxide relaxes the blood vessels so that it causes them to dilate somewhat, thus lowering the blood pressure. Now, walnuts is one key, ingredient, key nut that a person can actually eat. And the reason I say all, walnuts, one study showed that a person can eat a high-fat diet. It didn't say fat diet, but a high, or I should, let me change that, a high-fat meal. And at the end of that meal, just eat a handful of walnuts. 
those walnuts will offset the detrimental ben the detrimental benefits the two don't go together <laughs> they, they will offset the damaging that can be done with the high fat meal you know sometimes I hesitate to tell this particular piece because <laughs> some of us will go ahead and eat a particular way and now these nuts become our medicine to deal with this but because we are giving glory to God and in our bodies and in our spirits and all these things we're not going to do these things but when you're sitting down with someone if they're struggling with the high fat meal then don't share that with them just in, in terms of it offsetting uh, the damaging effects of the high fat meal you have to understand the way foods are prepared the meat and so on and so forth it has an addictive strangling hold on a lot of people out there so your goal is to help them as best as you can to be free from that grip but the least and it's just human nature if I were in their shoes if I found a way out I probably would take it too just to continue well I did do that before I got to this point and I just need the Lord to help me in some other areas in my life where I'm doing that so remember your foods that the body converts to nitric oxide that is very important especially for a person I've seen people I have one testimony well several testimonies when we were in the last um, health challenge we did at a big church back in Atlanta many of the people they just started because we introduced them to substituting their meat for beans and just story after story after story of some of them their doctors cutting their medication taking them off their medication and guess what this was over a three-week period when this happened and these are people who know nothing about all the stuff that you all are sitting here hearing and that we take for granted as Seventh-day Adventists but when they heard it they followed it and they start getting a big difference big difference and so that's just to encourage you and let you know now yes Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you have to instruct them how to better prepare those items. Now, I'll just share this with you real quickly, something I've learned because that same issue um, probably paralyzes a few of us, maybe. They need to soak their beans overnight to start with. And when you soak them overnight, you drain that water off add more water, boil them for roughly 10 to 15 minutes. Now pour that water off and then go ahead and cook them. Because what's happening, beans have a complex starch in them and plus because they're high in fiber that will not get rid of all the gas I guess if you will but that would cut back on it tremendously. Beans have a lot of fiber plus they also have some complex starches that the soaking process helped to break these down. So that's something you want to share with them to do. And what it's also going to take, if they're not used to eating it, it's going to take the body a little while to get adjusted and get used to that. So that'll be part of um, just the side effect of eating the beans, but it won't be quote a negative because their blood pressure they're going to see starting to come down. And especially even if they're somewhat overweight, that's going to help them to even lose weight too because the fiber swells when you drink your water two hours afterwards so it keeps them feeling full so they're not eating in between their meals so it's a lot of good benefits we're just talking about hyper about hypertension for right now mm -hmm. exercise yes The preference is the walnuts or the almonds. Those are the major two that are mentioned the most. Now you can eat peanuts here and there, but the pr preferred nuts is gonna be your walnuts and your almonds. Now, hmm? the preferred is gonna be your walnuts and your almonds. Now any after that, yes, but those are the two when we're talking about dealing with the hypertension to start trying to really get them down. I'm gonna take this one question, but I got four or five of the laws I want to cover. Wait just a moment. One handful or a quarter cup. Yes. You can use those but remember what I said. 
and I'm repeating it again, your top two nuts, your walnuts and your almonds, because we're talking about reversing diseases. Not so much the ones that you prefer and you really like, but those two. Now, exercise. Studies show that a little bit of exercise weekly also lowers the blood pressure. What a person needs to do if they're not used to exercising, and they may be a little bit, if, even if they're a little overweight, if all they can do is walk from here to the front doors and back, starting out, don't try and encourage them or push them to do more than that. Just get them to start exercising. Now, each day as they continue, you'll find that they're walking a little further. You're just getting them to get the body moving. If a person has never been used to exercising, then they're not going to want to. So you just want to get them started doing something. And the preference is to have them outside. Now, what eventually we want to get them up to is at least 30 plus minutes with each session. But I will say this much, the more they exercise, in and when I say the more in terms of time each day, the quicker they're going to see the benefits in bringing that blood pressure down. And mornings or in the evenings. But you don't want them exercising too close to their bedtime. So when I say in the evenings, that's before 6 o'clock. Because some people, you, you're looking at their schedule and you want them to exercise in the morning, that's preferable. But if they can in the morning, then you want them to try and get their exercise in in the evening. But if they are finding that difficult, we all, well, those when you work, you tend to have a lunch break. They can get in some time then. So you're looking at somewhere throughout that day to get them to exercise. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. She was just mentioning the fact of exercising in the sunshine. Sunshine also helps to lower the blood pressure as well and getting the vitamin D because the sunshine is going to um, reduce the cholesterol level as well. So that's going to also help to lower your blood pressure. As I mentioned earlier, the 30 minutes of exercise, if they can get up to that point, they really start seeing results. But when they get up to 45 minutes, and also, it just hit me, they need to be exercising at least six days out of the week. At least for 30 plus minutes. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing you want to make sure that you share with them. Now, our water. Water is real important for the body. Let me read something that, that uh, one of our, the doctors at one of the lifestyle centers wrote. He said, the kidneys overcompensate because of lack of water intake, which can cause low blood volume. When the blood volume is low, the kidneys increase pressure to compensate for lack of water. This, in turn, increases the blood pressure. So when the blood volume is low, and my wife just mentioned it earlier, the blood becomes somewhat sluggish, it's thick. The more water you consume, it thins out the blood, thus it pumps easier through the body. And I'll give you an example. I remember when I used to go uh, get my, to give blood. I would go in and there would be people lined up already on the tables. And I would go, be in and out in 10 minutes. And they'd say, you're such a fast bleeder. But these other people would have been there already for 30 minutes. And it's simply put, their water intake was not good. It was not good at all. And that's what I explained even to one of the nurses that were doing it. I said, if you would encourage the people to drink at least maybe 16 to 24 ounces of water before they come in, the people would be in and out. They move through much faster. And she said, you know, I never thought about that. She said, because consistently when you come in, because I tend to go to the same place, she said, you're in and out of here so quick. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. The gentleman was saying he works in that area and he sees that that's true because he sees it sometimes when people come in and out like that. Okay, quickly. Mm -hmm. Right, good idea. And that's something you want to share with your the, the clients that you will be working with. Wherever they can uh, take the steps versus the elevator to do that, or wherever they can walk versus riding, sometimes just merely parking further away from whatever store that you go to, you'll find that there are a lot of easy ways to get this in. Of course, you want to take in consideration safety and things like that.